Hey guys, Haz here at Shield K9, and today we are gonna to talk about how much exercise your dog needs in order to be happy, healthy, and most importantly, well-behaved. So first of all, guys, I want to address the common myth surrounding exercise with dogs. A lot of people view exercise with dogs through the lens of behavior. If I want my dog to behave, I must exercise him or her X amount of hours a day. And especially with certain breeds, you see this myth being perpetuated over and over again. Breeds like the Belgian Malinois, the Border Collie, typically high drive, high energy working breeds. You see this myth being perpetuated. My dog didn't behave today because she didn't get her three hour run. If she doesn't get her three hour run, she's a maniac. You hear stuff like this all the time. Guys, this is absolute nonsense. Now you may or may not have seen the reel that I recently posted on Instagram. Turned out it was quite controversial where I talk about people with these high energy, high drive breeds love to perpetuate this idea that these breeds need hours and hours and hours of exercise in order for them to behave. I've had clients tell me, oh, you know, I wanted a Belgian Melwa, but I don't have three, four hours a day to run the dog. And it's like, bro, you don't need three, four hours a day to run your Belgian Melwa. One of the first working breeds I owned was the Belgian Malinois. I had two Belgian Malinois that lived in a small townhouse with me and my wife years ago, okay? And these were not low drive pet quality Belgian Malinois. These were active high drive Belgian Malinois that I actually used for IGP competition. And these dogs coexisted with me and my wife in the townhouse with no problems. And guess what? I was working a full-time job at the time. I was not a dog trainer. I had very little time to go and spend working with these dogs. And yet they were happy, healthy, and stable in the house. Why? Because they had this wonderful thing called impulse control. All right, guys, let me just take a moment to mention two of the awesome products that we have available in our online store. This is the MCRS training balls. So first up, we have the eight centimeter orange foam ball. I love this ball. It's lightweight. It floats in the water. So if you like to play fetch in the water, it's an awesome ball. And it's nice and soft for those dogs that have a little bit of a softer mouth and don't like biting hard things. This is a fantastic ball. There is a little magnet right there in the strap. So you can affix the ball to a magnet training system if you have one. The other ball that we have, guys, you know, this is my personal favorite. This is the MCRS light green training ball. Then we have the hard yellow training ball. The light green is a little bit softer to the grip, right? Yellow is a little bit harder, right? So if you have a dog that really bites the crap out of the ball, maybe you, you get the hard yellow. And if you have a dog again, who has maybe a bit of a softer mouth or likes things that squish a little more, you can use the light green. I love these balls because the magnet is internal and I can put the ball exactly where I want it to be. Most magnet balls have the magnet in the strap and then that means the ball hangs down. I don't like balls hanging down. I like the ball to be exactly where I want it to be. And then when I deliver it, I can just reach and deliver the ball directly. So guys, check out our MCRS training systems, all the equipment that we have available, the vests, the magnet balls, and the balls. So what you guys have to understand is exercise is not a substitute for teaching your dog impulse control. I think the major problem is a lot of people really don't understand how to properly train or manage a dog, a dog of any kind, much less a working dog. And it's because there's so many misconceptions and myths and just bad information that's out there about dog training that just doesn't make sense. What most people view as dog training is really just glorified trick training. Sit for your cookie, give me your paw for a cookie, let me do some healing with a food lure. Real functional dog training actually teaches the dog this wonderful thing called impulse control. And impulse control for humans, for dogs, for any living being that we want to exist productively in our society is very, very necessary. The fundamental premise of impulse control is I want to do it, I might feel like doing it, but I know that I can't do it depending on the context and the situation. So for example, my dog might want the juicy steak on the counter, but he knows that he's not allowed to take the juicy steak on the counter and he's able to control himself from jumping on the counter and taking the juicy steak. My dog might feel like running around in the house, but he knows that he can't run around in the house because he's not allowed to run around in the house. Running around is only for outside. This concept is what is missing from a lot of modern 
and I put modern in quotations, right? Modern dog training ideologies, which is why people then start turning to things like psychotropic medication. Oh, my dog has anxiety and he's crazy unless I give him this medication that lobotomizes him, right? You have vets and behaviorists, again in quotation, that like legitimately are putting so many of these dogs on psychotropic medication. We're saying, oh, you know, my dog's a complete asshat unless he gets four hours of exercise in his weighted vest. It's like, no, this is not necessary. You just need to train the dog impulse control. You just need a training system that shows the dog the concept of, in this circumstance you can, and in this circumstance you can't. And if you have this, you don't need hours and hours every day to train your dog even more. Here guys, I'm gonna share with you a secret. A 30 minute structured walk with your dog. And structured, I mean, there are rules. The dog is asked to perform tasks during the walk that require him to utilize impulse control beats three hours of letting your dog run loose on the beach or wherever. It 100% beats it. If I take a dog for a structured walk for 30 minutes, and this is how I kept my Belgian Malwas, this is a secret to how I kept my Belgian Malwas calm in my little townhouse when I didn't have three hours a day to train them and to run them. I would walk them two times every day for half an hour, or maybe I'd do one half hour walk and one training session a day with them. That walk would contain structure. Sometimes the dog was free. Sometimes the dog had to walk next to me. Sometimes the dog had to do a downstay. Sometimes the dog had to control him or herself around distractions. That combination of freedom, rules, boundaries, impulse control, mentally satisfied the dog's need for that structure. Versus if I just took those dogs out and let them run for three hours, it wouldn't have been the same. I see it all the time. All these people say, oh, my dog's misbehaving. And then they go to some trainer or behaviorist and they say, well, you need to exercise your dog more. So they go and they exercise their dog, you know, for three hours. Guess what? Over time, the dog just gets fitter and fitter and fitter. And he just ends up needing more and more and more. And it never actually addresses the root of the problem, which is the dog has never been taught impulse control. I can take a one-year-old Belgian Malinois that lived his entire life in a kennel. He's never been in a house. Every time he comes out of the kennel, it's all for just drive building activities. He's doing bite work. Maybe he's doing a little tracking. Maybe he's doing ball hunts, just high drive, high intensity activity, and then just bouncing off the walls in the kennel for the entire first year of his life. I can take that dog and within one month, I have a dog that's very calm. He's able to be good in the house. He's walking next to the handler. He's recalling on command. He's doing all these things within a month after an entire year of that because I'm able to teach the dog impulse control. And I don't have to spend three hours a day exercising that dog. Now, don't get me wrong. I know a lot of people are gonna say, ooh, Hess says you don't have to exercise. That is not what I said. Now, I know most of you are smart and you have a basic level of nuance and already know that that's not what I'm saying. But of course, when I released that video on Instagram and Facebook, oh, this is wrong. A lot of people aren't gonna exercise their dog because they watch this video. Absolute idiocy. Look, if you're that stupid, you probably shouldn't own a dog in the first place. That's obviously not what I'm saying. Human beings, animals, we all need a certain level of exercise in order to be our optimal selves, okay? And in fact, I bet you a lot of the people that were criticizing that video don't get enough exercise, which is why they're able to engage in such stupid thought experiments as that. Point being, yes, you should exercise your dog, but your dog's exercise is not the prerequisite to your dog's behaving himself. When I had my Belgian Malwas, and let's say I had a rough day at work, or maybe I got sick for a couple days and they just weren't able to get out on their regular walk and training. Maybe they spent a couple of days just being let in the backyard and let back in the house. They weren't idiots. They didn't wreck the house. They didn't, you know, jump all over everything and the rules didn't get turned upside down. Why? Because they had impulse control. So even though they had more energy than they normally would have had, they were still able to control themselves because not having energy shouldn't be a prerequisite to good behavior. I hope you guys all understand what I'm saying here. Exercise your dog, stimulate your dog mentally and physically. Again, the big problem with the people in the exercise for hours camp is that they don't understand how to stimulate a dog mentally. And when you stimulate a dog mentally, they get tired very, very fast. Whereas when you just stimulate a dog physically, they get fit very, very fast, but their mental problem has never been addressed, which is why you still have a lot of the bad behaviors that are out there. You know, I once heard this story. I, I think I mentioned it before. I'm gonna mention it again. This supposedly famous like dog behavior expert in like this university, well-known university. I'm not gonna say where, I'm not gonna say who told me about this. She was talking about how they had a Tosa Inu, which is by the way, like, like a Mastiff type dog. They tend to be very aggressive dogs. 
and the way that they were trying to deal with the dog's aggression was that they would make the dog run with a weighted vest and then show the dog, I guess, like the stimulus, the target, like the other dog or something. And anytime the dog was aggressive, they would then run the dog again and then repeat the process until the dog was just like <sighs> so dead tired, you know, that it couldn't react. And then this was like marketed as like some wonderfully modern and, and fantastic way to address the problem of, of the dog being aggressive towards other dogs. Now, anybody who knows anything about dog behavior knows that that's not a long-term solution and that certainly wouldn't work because the second the dog isn't tired and he runs into another dog, guess what's gonna happen? The worst things are gonna happen, right? Because the dog never was taught impulse control. They just exhausted the dog. It's the same as those people that lobotomize dogs with psychotropic medication. It does not work long-term. It doesn't address the root of the problem. And the root of the problem is here, not just here. Not just here, not just here, it's here. And when you're able to address the here in a dog, regardless of the breed, you're able to control their behavior and you're able to have the dog that's happy, healthy, and well-behaved. So yes, you must exercise your dog, and you must mentally stimulate your dog, but most importantly, you must train your dog. And you must use a training system that makes sense to the dog and teaches him or her the real concept of impulse control. Not maybe, not please, not I hope, real impulse control. I must or I must not. Guys, thank you for watching. I'd like to take a moment to mention we have a complete suite of online training programs. If you're interested in learning how to train dogs the way we train dogs, check us out shieldcanineonline.com. Whatever you want to train, whether it's a puppy, whether it's a young adult dog or an adult dog, whether it's behavioral problems, reactivity, whether you want to learn protection training, competition obedience, it's all available there, shieldcanineonline.com.